Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to le learn how to read variables in R. So um, let's first of all take a look at a data set. I'm going to use the iris data set here. So uh, just type out iris and run that line of code to display the contents of the iris data set. So we can see if I scroll up here, we have 150 uh, rows in this data set and we have one, two, three, four, five uh, variables in this data set. So we have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the species names. And I'd like to be able to read individual variables rather than the whole data set like this. So first of all, a very, very useful thing to do, I can see it in the console here, but sometimes uh, if you want to know what the names of the data set, uh, the variables in the data set are, we need to refer to these names individually. So type out the names function and iris, and that will give me uh, the names that I can use. So for example, if I want to in my coding to save myself some typing, I can choose to uh, copy and paste um, a variable name. So sometimes variables might have fairly complicated names or be very, very long. I can also in this data set use the head function to do the same thing, iris, uh, run that line of code. We can see the first six lines, the header of the data set listed here. And again, we can see the variable names. So what we need to be able to do is uh, we need to be able to refer to the iris data set and the individual variables within that data set. So let's go ahead and try and um, refer to the variable sepal.length first. So I'm going to copy that. And uh, just to display that variable on its own, I type out the uh, data set name, first of all, iris. This could be your file name. And then use the dollar sign to link it then to uh, I'm going to paste in here my sepal.length that I copied, or I could type this out. So when I run this line of code, we can see uh, that the set, all the sepal lengths for all 150 variables are listed in the output or in the console. So that's the model and the way that they're listed here. So that means then I could do um, individual calculations on this. So let's say I wanted to find the mean value. So the mean of the iris data set. So again, just type in iris. Um, dollar sign um, sepa dot l e n g t h sepa length and so if I want to know what the mean value of those 150 numbers is uh, I click on run uh, the mean value is 5.84 I can also look at the other um, um, variables in the data set so uh, if I want to look at the sepa width for example again that's the data set name use the dollar sign to link it and then uh, sepa dot width can of course select from our studios pop-up. So when I run that, we get the sepal widths all listed. Uh, I can also look at the petal length and the petal width. So let's put out the code for those. Again, uh, the iris data set, um, the dollar sign, petal dot L-E-N-G-T-H. I uh, run that, we display, and that gives us all our numbers for the display for all the petal length. And final petal width is the dollar sign petal.width. When I run that, we can see that all the values for petal.width are displayed. And even though the uh, variable species um, only contains uh, Satosa, Virginicolor, and uh, Versicolor, and Virginica, uh, I can also display that if I want to. Iris, um, dollar sign, species. Note that I am spelling uh, each of the variable names exactly as they are in the data set. So that's why the names function above can be useful. So run that, and you can see that the um, uh, variable names are repeated over and over in here. And so that's how you refer to individual um, variables in the data set. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.